I'm Rick Johansson and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today we're going to do an Inkscape tutorial. We'll make a night sky star chart. Here's an example of one I did in a previous video. This one in the comments, Raj asked, just want to see if it's possible to do another night sky tutorial with a different background or style. So yes, thanks Raj. We'll make this one tonight where it's going to be a night sky with like a watercolor effect. And these are the key areas you can learn if you follow along. First, I'll show you the watercolor effects settings. We'll add a color gradient. We can modify it to go from midnight blue and black up here to like a light blue. We'll go to stellarium.org, which is the open source platform with all the star chart data. It literally lets you choose a location and a, a time. Like, so if it's a special date in your life, you wanna see what the stars look like that night, we can do that. We'll take the a screen capture from there and bring it into Inkscape. Then we'll create a vector file out of that, which we can customize. And then finally, one of the other things that Raj asked was, how do you add more star density? So I'll show you how to do that too. So let's begin. We'll start by grabbing the Create Rectangles and Squares tool. You can draw out a rectangle roughly the size of the project that you wanna do. And mine is bright red, which I do not want. So over here, this is the fill and stroke menu. If you don't have it, click this paintbrush thing in the corner. I brought in a color palette because I wanna cheat to go fast. So if I have it on my, my object selected, I have it on fill, I can do eyedropper and then grab like this very, very neutral gray just for like the background. And we'll start with that. Now we can make the night sky watercolor. So with your same tool, just make a small rectangle or square. I say small because for some reason the watercolor effect works better on a small scale. And once you have the gradient the way you like it, you can lock it in and then scale it back up into your project. So here it is with the wrong color square. Plus, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a stroke on it. So with the object selected, go to stroke and get rid of that. So X out of the stroke, go back to fill. And then let's just go to this blue so we can see the watercolor. So for the effect, go to filters, textures, watercolor. <laughs> and then see, let me zoom in so you can see this. This is Inkscape just doing math, making this. It's a little bit messed up here. If it looks like this right off the bat, that means you're setting your default settings are right on the money. If it's not, I'll show you how to fix it. So just uh, the basics here, this blur and opacity, we're still in the fill and stroke menu. If I play with the blur, see the blur, go down, blur goes down to zero and there's my rectangle, there's my like whatever shape that is. And if I add more blur, it somehow just becomes like watercolor. And while we're here, if you click on your edit paths by node, see that little tiny X in the middle? This lets you just move it around. It even just changes the, the ink, which is just so cool. So let's just, just pick anywhere you want just for now. This over here, the two, the two squares lets you change the width and height. And there's a lot you can do with it. So, but for now, I wanna keep it small to keep some consistency there. Because if you're following along, not everyone will have this look. So let's go to the setting. So as long as it's selected, go to filters, filter editor, and you'll see it pop up down here. Sometimes mine doesn't, you have to click on it and back off. So here is what we have to do. So Gaussian blur, watch this. There's a slider down there. This is 11.93, that's not important. Just it, what is important is when you play with it, you'll see now it's gone. It just erase the whole thing. And if I take off the blur, it's a full, obviously that's rectangle. So you wanna go where you wanna go. If you like it like that type of depth, go there. If you wanna have more of like a spooky, Rorschach test, you can play with that too. Maybe that'll be a different tutorial. Next setting on the filter editor is turbulence. You wanna check. So I have it on fractal noise for the type, for bass frequency. If you play with that, it gets ugly real fast. So try to keep it under two. Right about there looks good. Octaves just changes what the internal ink looks like. So if you slide that, see how if you do it now, it just looks like cheesy 1990s graphics. Then too much, maybe it's a little too defined. Somewhere in the middle, I think I had it on five. Right about there is good. And then C, that's just is the random starting point. I don't play with that. I don't mess with composite, color matrix, displacement map is pretty cool. It moves almost like you're looking down on the, some type of atmosphere. So if you have a preference, go with that. And finally, the last area, blend. I have to keep it on multiply to get the color to look good. So you can play with the other settings, but if you want it to look like this, that's what you have to do. Now I wanna make this more rectangular now that I have the ink blot the way I like it. And to do that, I'll click on the edit paths by node. If I choose this rectangle, I can grow it higher. And I'm taking close attention to the bottom because I want the final time when we stamp out the rectangle, I want the bottom to be like a bleeding edge there. 
So this looks okay, but let's duplicate it because I want to eliminate some of the opacity issues here. So control D will duplicate it. There we go. And let's take the top layer one. I'll click it and raise it up manually. I'm just pushing up arrow. I want to get rid of some of this white part there. So off camera, I just duplicated it actually five times and moved it around. I just want to make sure it has a nice consistency before I group everything and add the gradient. So I do like the way this looks. I'm going to grab way out no man's land. Just literally just click and go all the way past everything. There you can see there, I guess there was more than five. So control G groups it all together. So when I click on the gradient now, this is linear gradient, it's going to mess it all up because one part of the gradient, it goes to transparency. So it ruins what we have here. But when I add the color, then it'll, it'll go back. Just watch. So I click on the gradient and it's all ruined, but only because the default gradient is black to transparent. So we'll fix that right now. To do that, click on this pencil thing for edit the gradient. And I want to get my, I had my colors oh, there, right there. So you have this bar. This bar designates what is going to happen with the gradient. So the square is put the square up here. We'll make that like our midnight black. And then I'll put this, the other half, which is fully transparent. See how it's like all the way transparent. We'll add that to like maybe this baby blue there. I don't care what happens on the top because I'm going to clip it, but I want the bottom edge to come back. So let's go back to the top again. If I bring it down, see how the, the opacity returns. So that looks good there, but my bottom's all messed up. So let's get the opacity back there. That's the edge I want. Let me zoom in and show you. See how it has like this, this bleeding out effect? That's what I'm going for. This looks much better. So where'd my colors go again? All right, so I'm gonna go back to the, my square. Let's choose the midnight. I guess it's already there. And my bottom part I'll choose is baby blue. That kind of messed it up. Maybe we can just eyeball it. So I'm gonna go back to my bottom and I'm gonna choose something to like, there we go. So if you don't like your, your, your cheating preset, you can always manually inside of your color wheel change it. So where do we want it? Somewhere there. And there's a trick you can do. Down here I think it's perfect, but inside here I'm not loving. You can double click on your bar and add another stop. So see if, if you were going for something different, but I'm gonna make it it's like in between the two. I know it looks like a mess right now, but we're gonna clip out the rectangle with the bleeding edge and then put it onto the project area. And, and then, then we can add our stars. So when you're happy with your night sky, we can clip it. So grab your create rectangles and squares tools. And this time draw out a rectangle and we're gonna make it transparent so we can see what we're about to clip. Doesn't matter the color. I wanna have the bottom parts most important to me. I like it right there. So I will, everything's already grouped. So I'll click my clipping box, then hold shift and click all that watercolor stuff that we made. Go to Object, Clip, Set. <laughs> okay, yeah, there we go. So that is the night sky we're gonna use. To make it work so we can scale it up, go to Path, Object to Path, that's gonna lock it in. And then we can scale it without the watercolor just moving around on us again. Let's zoom back out and we'll put it onto our, I'm gonna change this base background later, but let's just see how we're looking. Okay, I centered it and I also made the gray here a, a touch lighter. So now let's get the star. So we'll go to, go to stellarium-web.org and I'll have the link in the description. And this is an open source platform. They have actually got the star data from any location in any time. So I have it um, down here, you can queue up. I have it at Manchester by the sea. It's a nice uh, coastal town nearby. And this is just a rendering. This is not my location. This is a, the, the uh, generic landscape. If you want to get rid of that, just uh, click down here to get rid of landscape. But then also for view settings, you want to get rid of Milky Way, Milky Way and DSS close. Now, one of the questions that Raj had asked in the second comment was, how do you have a greater star density? So this is one of the first places to do that. So click on your timestamp. We'll make it later in the night. See how it goes from, that's kind of like dusk to there's a lot of star density here, but I want to get rid of some of this noise. So I'll take out atmosphere and then deep sky objects. We don't need that. Now I can kind of move it around. Now, if you put in a specific time of your life, of your life and you want to like have some significant things up there, like if Mars, you think that's important to you to have in your star field, you can move it around. But for this tutorial, let's just go with what we have right here. You can get rid of all this shenanigans here just by clicking on these three bars to have more space. An important step before 
in the previous tutorial, you could just right click and then it would let you save the image as is, but it doesn't do that anymore. I think they're adding some functionality that you'll be able to download it later. So instead, we're gonna screen capture it. So in my case, I'm just gonna use the snippet function that's part of Windows. If you need help with screen capture, just leave a comment below and I'll see if I can help you out. But for this one, snipping tool, it comes on every Windows computer. I'll just go new and I want to go with something just beautiful. <laughs> this will work right here. So I'll just capture that. I'm gonna save it on the desktop. And before we go, thank you again to Stellarium for the data. We can say goodbye to you. Let's bring in the file into Inkscape. So import type embed DPI from file rendering none. Okay. And there it is. So it's a very small file, but all we need are the dots, but we need to make it into a vector now. So we'll go up into path trace bitmap. And if you've never used trace bitmap, let me break down the menu here. So we're going to keep it to single scan brightness cutoff, which is just gonna look at our image and say, hey, what is the bright parts, what are the dark parts? But we're gonna invert it because I wanna take out the white part. So we'll do invert, update. I know the stars are gonna be black when we pull them out. We can change them white in Inkscape though. And to answer Raj's second question, how do you do better star density? This is just the default 0.45 for the brightness threshold. But if we go lower, maybe down to like 0.20, then you push update and you'll see a lot more stars. So it'll look better than this. We push okay, and then we'll move it out here. <laughs> we don't need our source anymore, we'll get rid of that. But let's move in and see what we just captured. So I'm just zooming in. It's gonna look a little bit like a mess, but that's all right. So this is now a vector. So what we can do here is I'll go to my edit paths by node, and you see how that just became, all that is is these are all little nodes. And so this tool lets you affect the different nodes there. I'm gonna hold, shift and then click around that word there forget what it was and delete so that word's gone let's see what this is so capella it's the name of a star i'll go to edit paths by node and i'll drag outside of the word that collects all those nodes and then delete and let's see what we have here looks like dirt but it's not it's stars so let's bring it on top of our field and let's change it white now i've been doing a two layer so it has a little bit of a glow I'll show you that now. So first, just line it up. There's our star field, you can't see it that well. So we know that this vector now we can, uh, we can change in Inkscape. So I'll just click on down here on my color bar. You can do the color wheel too if you want, but just color bar to white. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's it, but not, but not yet. I wanna add one more effect. So I wanna duplicate it. And then remember blur, we had so much fun with earlier. If you add a blur, it gives it, let me zoom in and show you what I'm doing. That's like my old way, and now I can add a little bit of a, a blur. There is the star field. Okay, so and then let's just cheat and bring in a label. You can label a date or a time or a place. There is the night sky with a watercolor effect that we made in Inkscape. This is the second version of the star chart. If people wanna see another one, let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna make your own, I hope this helped and you can, you can, you know, the whole universe at your fingertips. So thanks.